Serratus anterior plane block is a really easy and a safe block to perform. We will review how to do this block and discuss its use for the management of pain in patients with multiple rib fractures. Rib fractures are painful and have high mortality and morbidity, especially in the elderly patients and those with chronic lung diseases. The pain from the rib fractures prevents patients from taking deep breaths, coughing and eventually leading to atelectasis. This can further lead to retention of secretions and development of pneumonia. Managing the acute pain is key in preventing these complications, but also important for early engagement with physiotherapy. It was first described by Blanco et al. in 2013 for chest wall surgeries. Since then, this block has been used for multiple other indications, pain from rib fractures being one of them. A cadaveric study looked at the spread of dye when injected in the serratus anterior plane. They noted that the spread was greater in the cadavers that had rib fractures as compared to the one without fractures. Let's look at the relevant anatomy. There are two main muscles, the finger-like serratus anterior muscle and the wing-shaped posteriorly lying latissimus dorsi muscle. The idea of the block is to deposit a large amount of local anesthetic in this plane between the two muscles. You can see that in this plane lies the long thoracic nerve, the lateral cutaneous branches of the intercostal nerves T2 to T9, and also sometimes the intercostal brachial nerves. This diagram shows that the lateral cutaneous branches of the intercostal nerves pass through the plane between the two muscles. We aim to inject within this facial plane and split the two muscles. Patients can be positioned either in the supine or sometimes in the lateral decubitus position. Supine position is preferred in most patients in the trauma bay who might also have spinal injuries. Probe is placed in an anterior posterior orientation as shown. You can visualize the ribs and the pleura between them. There is a layer of muscle above the ribs. This is the serratus anterior muscle. As you move the probe posteriorly, you can see a beak-like muscle arising from the posterior aspect, lying above the serratus anterior muscle. This is the latissimus dorsi muscle. This is the image you would like to see while performing the block. The needle is introduced in plane with the ultrasound probe, aiming for the facial plane between the two muscles. Here we are scanning anterior posteriorly. As you can see, the latissimus dorsi approaches from the posterior side. Look for any blood vessels in the path of the needle. Here we can see the thoracodorsal artery. It is an important landmark and you do not want to puncture this. Here is an example of the block being performed. Let's look at the sonoanatomy. You can see the beak-shaped latissimus dorsi muscle, the underlying serratus anterior muscle and the ribs. We introduce the needle from the anterior aspect. Here I'm using a blunt needle, so getting through the fascia can sometimes be difficult. It is very important to visualize the tip of the needle at all times. I'm trying to visualize the tip of the needle and aiming for the fascia between the two muscles. I inject a small amount of local anesthetic. Nope, that's intramuscular. Let's try again. Nope, still intramuscular. I introduce the needle a bit further. Now I know I'm definitely in the muscle. I slowly withdraw the needle, injecting a very small amount of local anesthetic. That's it. You can see the unzipping of the fascia. This suggests that we are in the correct plane. I introduce the needle in this pool of local anesthetic. This is not always needed, but since I am going to introduce a catheter, I want to make sure my needle is well in this place. I inject about 40 ml of levobupivacaine in this space to give a bolus of the local anesthetic. You could also inject half of your bolus through the catheter. We then introduce the catheter and see that the catheter is placed well inside the facial plane. You can scan the patient just before withdrawing the needle to confirm the placement of the catheter. This can be seen here as an hyperechoic catheter as pointed by the marker. Here is another example of serratus anterior plane block being performed. As we scan posteriorly, you can see that actually the fracture fragment comes in view. This is in the transverse view and going along the longitudinal view of the ribs, you can see a clear 
step deformity. We performed a single shot block in this patient. The sono anatomy is slightly different from the previous patient, but you can see the latissimus dorsi, the serratus anterior and the underlying ribs. We aim for the facial plane between the two muscles. The anterior and the posterior spread of the local anesthetic indicates that it's a good facial plane spread rather than an intermuscular injection. Here you can see that at multiple times a local anesthetic bolus is given that lifts off the latissimus dorsi muscle from the serratus anterior muscle. Here is another example where the local anesthetic clearly separates the two muscles. Some take home points. Refractures are painful and early in LGCI is key in managing refractures. Serratus anterior plane blocks is safe and effective and catheters can be easily introduced, which can be used for local anesthetic infusions. Make sure you watch out for the thoracodorsal artery and visualize the unzipping of the facial plane.